All right, so this is season two of Team Fighting Championship, and we have Fight Four. Fight Four, exactly. <laughs> and I'm here with Rob. This is Fight Commentary Breakdown. Heyo. And so this is actually um, for those of you who've seen the series or seen the previous rounds. This is the loser bracket. Mm -hmm. This is USA, which we saw got their butts kicked by the Latvians, uh -huh. um, versus the um, Belarusians, who we saw got their butts kicked by the Polish. So, so this is a face-off between the two losing teams. Exactly. Got it. And so this is a round where both of them are in it to win it because they want to be able to come back for the next season, right? Mm. So if you, if you win at least one round, then you have more of a chance of arguing for getting brought back. Now, what happens when you win it all? Like, what do you get? Um, if you win the whole round, I think your whole team, I think each of you gets 5,000. Or maybe the team gets 5000 and you split it or something. <laughs> it's, it's honestly not a lot. It's bragging rights. Yeah, it's bragging rights. That's a good. It's just about the loop. So brawl, you would say it's about the glory. Exactly. <laughs> it's about the glory. And the Team USA is definitely not there to, to um, you know, um, fight for the money. They just want to experiment to see if yeah. MMA can be used, right? And this is we remember we saw this fight, oh, and yeah. that boxer just got destroyed by the he rest. Was way of them. old, like, yeah. He wasn't supposed to be in there. Nope, right? not at all. That oh my gosh, palm strike to the face. Mm -hmm. Why is he? You can't. You shouldn't be able to keep your fingers out like that unless you're eye gouging. Exactly. This guy is super old. I wonder if he's just like a like a sleeper badass. Yeah, he's the sleeper badass. I think. <laughs> I interviewed him for um um a while ago. So oh, nice. he actually told me um he would have been the last person to fight. Let's say if all his team was down and they needed an extra person like to make five, he mm. would have fought. Ah, so gotcha. I guess he could have fought. This is kinda how I dance. Nah, exactly. <laughs> Awkwardly. I have a little bit more fat on my midsection. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't keep me from dancing like this. Exactly. I think these ladies are doing a good job. Yeah. Doing, doing a good job. They're feeding their families. They're yep. doing good work. Exactly. I think I do a few more squats. That's okay. <laughs> but, uh, That's true. Overall, good work. Mm -hmm. good evening, so now Svetlana comes out. We welcome you on the Svetlana. Yeah. Of the and this is a humongous stadium, by the way. So there, the it's a huge seated stadium. Unfortunately, there were no audience members. Uh -huh. But maybe yeah. one day, if they have another season, season four, it'll actually have live audience. Nice. It's kind of like what they did here in the States with like uh, the uh, Gracie Invitationals and the Eddie Bravos and all that stuff. Back in the day, you just have, you know, academies going over to other academies yeah. and be like, we're going to throw down right now. Exactly. <laughs> Especially if somebody got jumped in the streets. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was like, you jumped our teammate, mm -hmm. now you're gonna fight. <laughs> Man, martial arts, when, even when we were growing up, was so different yeah. compared yeah. to what it is now. Yeah. And for you, you at least saw the evolution of MMA in America. I was in China. Oh, yeah. So until I came to America, I still thought Kung Fu was like the coolest thing. Yeah. And then now I realize, you know, Kung Fu is not as overrated as people say it is, oh, but no. it has holes in it. Yeah. And I would have never known that if I stayed in China. You know, I think, I'm not sure if it was Bruce Lee, but I, I think it was. It's just like you take the good and you leave the bad. Yeah, you know exactly. what I mean? You take what works and you leave what doesn't. Yeah. And unfortunately, most of Bruce Lee's teachings didn't filter back to mainland China. Mm. Hong Kong, maybe Taiwan a little bit, but mainland China is still stuck with like the dancey type of wushu, which is mm. what I learned when I was young. Gotcha. And you could look really cool on camera and perform well, but how much of that was really practical? Yeah. You know what looks really cool and is like incredibly vicious is... Uh, Capoeira. Capoeira. And people don't realize like how practical it is. Yeah. It's actually incredibly practical. You know, Felipe Verdun is like a Capoeira like badass. Mm -hmm. And you know, he's uh, um, just really proficient mm -hmm. and trains uh, a lot of younger people here in Capoeira mm -hmm. in, in Venice. And um, but he's you know been training his younger brother. Fabricio mm -hmm. in Capoeira for forever and so you'll see like these like stingray kicks that you know Fabricio pulls out of nowhere mm -hmm. and uh, it's just that's his older brother's influence mm -hmm. and so this is the fight where um, Jody told me he he sat out the boxer guy because the boxer guy was banged up pretty bad 
Mm. So this guy is so thin. Yeah, this Sean poor, Barnett. Poor guy. What are you doing, bro? I want to know what his story is. Mm-hmm. What what made him think that it was okay for him to step into the ring today? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like you need at least thirty more pounds on you. Exactly. So in this case, the Belarusian team is they're actually about slightly the same bigger. Size, yeah. yeah, maybe slightly bigger, but yeah, they're they're not. This is probably equally weight yeah. weight classes. But um, sometimes I wonder if Sergey just watches this and he's like. I can break you all. Probably. <laughs> DH does have a few people who are bigger, at least weight-wise. Mm-hmm. But, of course, U.S. has Ryan, the really big rhino dude, so who I interviewed also. So. Nice. So, but I think... Um, what was that interview like? It was great. Ryan's so cool. Ooh, that guy <laughs> almost started early. Yeah, early. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, F it, whatever. Yeah. This is five on five. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man, that guy's just taking shots to the chin. Yep. He's like, I eat He's like, I don't care. All right. Because they already, Team this... USA already lost one. So, like, we're just going to, yeah. we're just going to break that's people. Good. Great. So, that's great. So, here's what he did. He controlled the hips. If you can control the hips, you control the entire body. Mm-hmm. The guy was still holding on to a, a t- guillotine attempt, attempt, even though he was in side control. Mm-hmm. He can't can't finish that from mm-hmm. there. You can do a neck crank from there, but it's pretty hard. Mm-hmm. Um, you can sweep, of course. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he's still holding on. Yeah, the guy could have von flu choked him. Himself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I've been actually seeing quite a few more von flu chokes. It's, this guy's going for it. Yeah, or he's he going for it. Looked like it was mm-hmm. um, in the UFC lately. Mm-hmm. I think it was like maybe a month ago. I saw a really public one. Wow. Or a really showcased one. Dang, dude, that guy was dropping elbow yeah, elbows. elbows. And the reason is, Ryan told me his hand was broken at this oh, point. Yeah, dang. so that's why he's only using his elbows. Woo. You'll see later. Well, People when we should use elbows so much more. More, I yeah. Mean, like, you're going to break your hand. You have so many tiny bones yeah. in your hand. Yeah. And I don't even know if these guys are wrapped properly. Probably not. Their hands. Oh, man, this is actually going a lot longer. This is actually like everybody's in a jujitsu match. Yep. Yeah. Essentially. So this guy's... Got a, he's had an overhook on or he had a whizzer on one arm and he had the head trapped on the other going for the arm bar. Arm now he's gotta to go to his side. side. He has to go to his side in order to straighten out. Oh he got, got it. it. Yeah, he got it. He's oh wow. That's in deep actually. Yeah. No, the guy oh, tried to stomp. Going for a stomp. Oh, nope, he's got he, that. He's he got that. He won. Oh, Great job. Holy shit. And now go help Ryan good. I wonder if he broke his arm. Looks yeah. like it. Dang. There's nothing scarier than feeling your knee or your elbow go pop, pop, pop. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's terrifying. You're like, am I ever going to walk straight yeah. ever again? Yeah, exactly. Uh, Romulo uh, was just in a jiu-jitsu tournament like a week ago, and mm-hmm. he didn't tap, and they ripped his ankle apart. Ouch. And, you know, he thought he was going to win on points, and he didn't win on oh, points. Oh, no. And now he'll never walk the same ever again. Oh, my God. That's actually, oh, that guy is actually doing a pretty decent job about keeping him away. Yeah. So, oh, rear naked rear is going naked on over here. Um, easier to finish that rear naked if you go to your side or go mm-hmm. to the back. But um, okay, so mount escapes. If I was that guy, I would. Uh, oh, that's wow. impossible. Oh my gosh. Mount escapes. If somebody's got you in full mount, in my opinion, the best way to get out of that is to try and. Uh, Attack one of the legs, mm-hmm. so you can you can slip right into a straight ankle lock or a heel hook if you uh, oomp up and then get a knee in between you and your opponent and mm-hmm. then go directly into the, the leg attack. I see, and you'll see a lot of these top top jujitsu guys like Gary Tonin. They go like a, they'll let somebody take mount mm-hmm. just to attack their leg. Wow. Yeah, um, because they're they know they're gonna finish in submission. They're not even interested in. Getting points. Mm-hmm. This poor guy. Wow, he's bleeding. Oh, bro, just taking a beating. Just taking a beating. I don't think I could do that, man. I don't yeah. think I could hit somebody while somebody else was holding them. Yeah. It just didn't, it wouldn't feel fair to me. Yeah. Um, I can't believe that skinny guy actually prevailed. Yeah. I can't believe that. Was he the one that got the armbar? Yeah. I believe, and I, I, you know, I get the names confused. So I believe he's the submission specialist on their team. Yeah, if yeah. you remember the previous fight where he fought the Latvians, he's the guy who was trying to do all those heel hooks and mm-hmm. everything. I believe that was him. Did you see how he went? He eventually was belly down, mm-hmm. and that was because initially he he uh, was on his back, and then I said, "Go to your side. If you go mm-hmm. to your side, then you can you can crank it more, and mm-hmm. then you can transition to belly down." Mm-hmm. This guy got a premature start. 
Yeah. He, he tried to pull off the Verdum. He yeah. tried to pull off the flying jump kick in the beginning of the fight. Interesting. Fabricio pulled that kick off in front of uh, with Gonzaga, uh -huh. and then he did it with uh, Overeem, and then he did it with Travis Brown. He did a flying jump kick. This dude was. He had his eyes sort of rolling around in his skull while he's throwing hooks. Wow. Boom. Ouch. Temple shot. Yep. Whew. Oof. You gotta get your legs in between you and your opponent. Mm -hmm. North-South is a hard, kind of a hard position to get out of, but, you know, basically, if you're in a North-South position, what you really want to do is you want to push their hips away. Mm -hmm. You want to control their hips as much as possible. I see. And keep your elbows in. You just don't want to get trapped in the arm bar. It's really easy for somebody if they're in in the top position in a north-south position to grab your arm and mm -hmm. go for a Kimura and or arm bar. Makes sense because their legs are already near your arms. Mm -hmm. This. Oh, rabbit punch right behind the ear. The, Ameri the Americans are learning these fight techniques that aren't allowed in yeah. MMA. You know, it's the second fight, so they're like, okay. And they're like, oh, we get it. There so are no it. rules. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. So. Exactly. So, of course, you got the dancing. Yeah. Good job, ladies. <laughs> they're just, you know, they're, they're probably all, you know, neurosurgeons, and they're just trying to make their money from med school. Exactly. That's the key. That's what they are doing. I would knock them. Yeah. If I had to, and I had, had the ability to, I probably would do it also. Yeah. Unfortunately, nobody wants to see me dance. So. <laughs> <laughs> At oh. least not pay me for it. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be funny if these ladies actually weren't paid. They just did it as a favor. Let's say Sergey knew all of them from his bouncing days. I'm or something. sure Sergey knew plenty of people. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> this guy's 19. Yeah. I wonder where you pick these guys. Where do you farm these guys from? Well, the he's the, got a pretty good Muay Thai plum there. Yep. Um, oof, he just got clipped. Clipped hard. in the face. Oh, what a chin, man. Yeah. He took a hook right to the chin yep. and kept standing. Okay, so here are the here are the different types of knockouts. Mm -hmm. You have a whiplash knockout, mm -hmm. in which case. The, the hand lands directly on the tip of the chin mm -hmm. and causes a whipping motion of the neck. And mm -hmm. then what happens is the, tight, the neck muscles tighten around the bottom of the, um, the pons area, the spine area, mm -hmm. and that causes a blackout. I see. Um, you don't really need a lot of force in order to get that whiplash motion. You just, in terms of physics, you know, if you have, if you have it on the farthest point, then the torque you know, is stronger. You know, I see. The, torque, the angular momentum is faster. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the whiplash knockout. The second type of knockout is the the disc, uh, jaw disc knockout. Meaning, mm -hmm. if I if I strike downward and I kind of hit your chin down mm -hmm. to your chest, it causes your jaw uh, disc to go up into your brain. Oh. And so you'll see a lot of boxers will strike downward. And what they're really trying to do is hit the chin, basically, to somebody's chest. Interesting. Well, now I know. Yeah. <laughs> if Boss Rutten was calling us, he'd be like, leave their shot, leave their shot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, so it's not enough just to hold on because you know your buddies are going to come and, or his buddies are going to come and kick you in the face. Exactly. So you've got to start figuring out how to sweep here. Yeah. Um, oh, it looked like he was trying, but now he allows the American to posture up. Oh, yeah. Oh, great. Distance Which, management. There's a couple of different things you can do from that position. And this position sucks. Yeah. Of now he's it's now mount. full mount. But before this, um, when he had full guard and the guy was kind of postured down, if they're, if they're really um, top heavy and you're in full guard, easiest thing to do, in my opinion, is to try and get to your elbow mm -hmm. and try and go up and make it look like you're going for a Kimura. Mm -hmm. So you you would lace your arm around their arm and make it look like you're going for a Kimura. Mm -hmm. But you can also, from that position, put your tricep on the back of their head and mm -hmm. slip it into a guillotine. So if they allow you to go for the Kimura, you go for the Kimura. But if they try and defend the Kimura, you turn it into a guillotine choke and then you just sit back and finish the guillotine. Interesting. Well, that guy's angry. Yeah. He's like, I had so much more in me. Yep. Pretty good plum choke. But okay, here's the deal. Or plum, uh, Muay Thai plum. But here's the thing. When you're doing a Muay Thai plum, you want to put your temple essentially to their temple. Uh -huh. You don't want your face way out in front of their face. Mm -hmm. The reason for that is because they're probably going to hook the hell out of you. I see. 
A good way to escape the Muay Thai plum is to do a cross face and basically push away. Mm -hmm. And you always want to posture up and put your hips essentially into their hips. Mm -hmm. um, but you, you always, if you are the attacker and you have the plum, then you want to put your temple basically right next to their temple and, and nullify like their... That. Like yeah, what he's exactly, doing there. Yeah, that. Yeah, that, yeah, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Nullify their hooks, mm -hmm. you know. Now, if I was this guy, what I would do is I would really try and sit up and go for that Kimura mm -hmm. or go for the guillotine. But because this guy's so top heavy, I would I would go right into rubber guard. Mm. So essentially, what I would do is he's not see like he he likes posturing down. And as soon as as soon as somebody's postured down like that, and they have their hands on the mat, mm -hmm. as soon as they have their hands on the mat, I can trap one of their arms. And then once I've trapped their arms, it's over because mm -hmm. I'm in, I'm in rubber guard, and and then I can finish it from there. Once I'm in rubber guard, I've got omoplatas, gobugo platas, arm bars. I've got a whole variety of sweeps. It's like ridiculous. So, Interesting. so right here, this he's got a strong cross face. If this guy on the bottom could think for a second, he would grab that elbow. He would lace. He would lace his arm over that elbow, and then he would go for the an arm bar real quick. Mm. Um, if you want to see a good uh, example of that, you should watch um, Mark Coleman versus Fedor Emelianenko. He uh, he gets this arm bar on Mark Coleman. Mark Coleman, of course, has this really tough wrestling pressure, you know, um, top heavy guy. And uh, Fedor sinks in the bottom arm bar, you know, from the back. Mm -hmm. And uh, just a really good example of that. Wow, interesting. And well, this match ended with the help of his friends. So it was two Americans and they took down the yeah. Belarusian. Ooh. Wow, he MBK it. got... He got, earned it with a yeah. couple of punches. This guy had a good chin. I mean, I yeah. saw him get the whiplash hit. Yeah. And I thought he was going down for sure. Here yeah. comes. Oh. Here comes right yeah. here. Oh, no, the cut. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, again, right here, lace the arm, go for the arm bar. But, you know, he's in survival mode at this yeah, point. Yeah, Oof, that sucks so much. Yeah. Oh, Rhino, our big guy. 18 years old, I still can't get over yeah. that. Yeah, and he's big, though. It's the two big guys fighting. Good thing they picked similar sizes. Where are your parents? <laughs> uh, and Rhino said this is... This is where he gets suplexed down. You'll see very soon. The guy throws him. See, uh -huh. he gets yeah. suplexed down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, what the fuck just happened? Uh, yeah. yeah. And somewhere along the line, maybe it was when he got suplexed, like that's when his hand got broken. Uh, so Rhino has his hand completely broken now. Dang, yeah. And he was trying to do an omoplata. Oh, see? there he goes. Yeah. yeah, good. Oh, and he's got good hip control, too. Mm -hmm. That's how you do it. When you lock in the omoplata, you've got to control their hip because the escape is for them to roll over. And I think he did, right? Oh, the yeah. guy he escaped did, and rolled over. Well, I mean, he did a good job of... Uh, basically, what happens is is you control the hip, and you if they are going to roll, you allow them to roll only so much as you gain side control. Mm -hmm. And so he gained side control, and then he gained full mount. And I now see. it's just raining down elbows. Mm -hmm. Oof, this guy's heavy. Thanks, Anthony. So yeah, again, to escape full mount here, you're gonna go for go for a leg in my opinion. That's just the easiest attack. Mm-hmm. See, you notice Ryan's like, okay, I can't keep punching, my hand's already broken. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, it's not hard to break your hand, yep. for sure. So Ryan is his name Ryan? Yeah, Ryan. So Ryan's Ryan's doing the right thing in terms of he's inching he's inching his way up underneath the armpits. Mm-hmm. And if you wanted to, he could transition to S guard here. S guard is like so difficult, especially if it's a heavy guy. Mm -hmm. it's so hard to get out of. It's just really strong control. I see. And ooh, Ryan. Ooh. Yep, I think. I feel for this bottom guy. Yeah, the bottom guy. He's just got total control over the situation here. He's like, I don't even care that I got low handles. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna smash you. Yep. Oof. <laughs> Picking his shots. Beep, yeah. beep, boop, boop. Going for a choke here. Trake choke. Mm -hmm. That's so uncomfortable. And that this knee. Guy, knee to the face. Yep. Boss Yep. Knee to the face. <laughs> Man, I can't even imagine the adrenaline dump after this fight. Yep. Bam! Right yep. in the face, dude. The scariest thing, dude, about these fights is is that a strike could come out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. 
and you could, like the thing is, is that if you prepare for a punch, if you see a punch coming, you can absorb it to some degree. If you have no idea that a, that a sucker punch is coming, it can literally end your life. Yeah. This happened in a K1 fight just this last week. This mm -hmm. guy got kneed in the face, and I think he thought that the that the round was over. Mm -hmm. And he started to return to his corner, and the opponent was like, nope, and just clocked him Ouch. hard. And he, he, he went to the ground as if he was dying. Oh, my God. Yeah, he looked like he was just bleeding profusely from the cranium. Ugh. Oh, this was the north-south so position. Yeah, this is north-south. So what he wants to do is push the guy's hips away. Mm -hmm. Push the guy's hips away. He's trying to pinch the guy's head and his knees. It's not going to work. You don't have enough him. leverage. Yeah, yeah, it's just not what you want to do. Uh, you can try and, you know, you can try and... If, you, if he was to put his right arm down and sort of trap the base of that guy's right leg, he can try and sweep. Mm -hmm. Again, don't forget, you have to get two bases before you sweep in that direction. Mm -hmm. Um but this guy's got pretty decent north-south pressure. I mean, it's not wonderful, but the thing is the guy in the bottom is kind of holding himself here. Mm -hmm, yeah. You know? Um, if the guy in the bottom could, you know, transition almost immediately into a leg attack, you know, mm -hmm. he could go for a heel hook or if you want it, or at least, at least go for a toe hold, you know? Mm -hmm. And now he's oh. mounted, and he's getting two people ready. Oh, man, I think I would think about this for the rest of my life. Yeah. If I was the guy on the bottom getting destroyed, I think I would probably wake up in the middle of the night going, oh, no. Yeah. I should have done this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If only I knew how to escape now. Exactly. Oh, oh, my God. I mean, you know, all, the only thing you can do in this scenario pretty much is cover up. Yeah, exactly. Cover up until your friends arrive, but unfortunately his friends won't arrive. Yeah. Oh, he's he's angry. Yeah, no need to be angry, man. But I, I get why, because they just got their butts kicked by the Polish, yeah. and now they got their butts kicked by the Americans, and everyone thought the Americans were kind of like the weakest ones, so. Huh, I wonder why. Yeah. Going for the rabbit yeah. <sighs> Elbows. If you want to learn how to throw really good elbows, especially from the guard, you got to look at George St. Pierre. George St. Pierre? Okay. George St. Pierre. John Jones does a really good job, but it's mostly because they learn from the same guy. Uh, how to throw elbows from the guard. Interesting. Now we have Sean Barnett. Oh, he, oh, the guy kicked him yeah. into the post. That's uh, that's the Fabricio special. Wow. The Doom special right there. Yeah, but he gets he you gets the guy on the leg, ground. Got a good single leg. Goes directly to side control. Oh, this was the... so he's trying to hold on to the guillotine mm -hmm. choke, but the guy's already inside. Yep. Control and looks like what the heck is going on here. It looks like there's two. Oh, they're they're entered yeah. into a round. So he's going for the guillotine choke, but he's got him in side. He's got him in uh, half guard here, mm -hmm. so that's not going to finish. He's not so going to get that. Good job. Ooh, in the he sweep. bumped him. Yeah. yeah. Good sweep. Because it looked like he was trying to go for the von Flew choke, right? Sean Barnett was trying. I think so. Yeah. You know, here, here, this guy's got a pretty. Ouch. He's doing a good job controlling the posture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He looks like he's trying to set up a triangle here. Yep. Uh, he's got good control. It goes for the arm, arm bar. Bump. Great transition. Mm -hmm. Now here he needs to go to his his right side. Mm -hmm. uh, but then the guy postures up, so he needs to hook that yep. knee. He should hook underneath the, the oh, right knee. Okay. Good finish there. He definitely dislocated that elbow. Oh, that's... I heard it. I heard it go pop, pop. Ouch. Yeah, you can tell he's gone. Oh, jeez. Oh, yep. sucks. If you have a if you have a really crappy tear like that, mm -hmm. you need to get on. Um, uh, what is it? It's, uh, what's the? There's a supplement that's really really helpful for repairing tears. Oh. Collagen. Collagen. Collagen I need so, to take some. Oh my goodness, it's so helpful. I had the worst pec pectoralis tear, mm -hmm. and uh, it was so bad I couldn't even open up my car door. Ouch. And after after three months of uh, collagen mm -hmm. uh, supplements, literally back to brand new. Wow, awesome. dude, I have to take them. I have um, I have a knee injury. This this jujitsu guy was trying to show me something, uh -huh. and he messed up and he tore up my knee. So I need to I need to take up. Oh man, yeah, I would be pretty angry. <laughs> no, I was, I was. <laughs> oh jeez, that's why you you really you really only 
You got to be careful with white belts. Man. Yeah, I know. And I learned my lesson because a brown belt was supervising him, right? But uh, it, it doesn't make sense. It was the white belt doing the move. And he just messed up. My my leg got caught in his gi. So uh, he was trying to do like an ankle lock or something. So I, I felt it immediately. It was like, fuck. It was like yeah. a... Like, it was not one of those like popping things, but you knew something got torn. It's just, I just felt it yeah. in my mind. I was shouting "fuck," but it was already too late because it already got torn. You can feel the rip. Yeah, it's a scary feeling, man. So it's really scary. I'll take some collagen because it honestly still hasn't healed completely, and I'm just prepared for it being a lifelong injury. But you know what? Maybe collagen could help it. Well, collagen certainly helps with the muscle tears. Mm -hmm. If, if if the connective tissue has been ripped off the bone, then you you know just get a little surgery or whatever it may mm -hmm. be, but. Um, but no, I'm telling you, I was so impressed. I was terrified that mm -hmm. I was going to have a hard time with my pec for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Totally fine. So. Nice. Awesome. Wow. So fight that was four. Fight 4. TFC, Event 2, Season 2. and um, Americans came out on top. Exactly. So this was Rob and Jerry. So learn how to get your arm bar from the bottom. Yeah. Exactly. And normally that's one of the first techniques they teach. Exactly. I think it is the first It is technique. the first technique. Yeah. So. That and the Kimura. Just remember, if you are if you have full guard, it's pretty easy to just control the posture, try and go for the arm bar, try and go for the Kimura. If they don't give up the Kimura, then you can just transition into the guillotine. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Yep. It's, it's, it's all a fluid um, bunch of motions. Agreed. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah.